Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the first episode of the Wrestle Chat Podcast. My name is A.V. Morales, and I'm here alongside Shane O'Sullivan to talk to you about the latest in the world of pro wrestling. Shane, man, how you doing? Uh, I'm doing great. Uh, I'm a bit sick this week, but you know, I'm ready to, to give it my all and get this uh, podcast started. Uh, Dude, so- don't tell me you got the mumps, too. Don't freak me out here. Uh, I'm so glad I don't because I've heard so much about that. Like, um, I, I've never had it, but I've heard it's like it's it's very bad with the the airborne and you know especially like if Roman has it because obviously they thought it was something else. Uh, the meningitis, wasn't it? Um, yeah, at, fir- at first they I thought they were reporting meningitis at first, which I read the symptoms and holy cow, I'm glad that's not the case. Even so, mumps doesn't seem that good either. It's less of a problem, but still something to, to be worried about in general yeah so i'd hope it, it, it doesn't affect them too much but i, I imagine uh, i've heard that they'll be back at raw next week for an evaluation that's like bray uh i imagine Bo. they didn't mention Bo, but i imagine him and uh jojo and uh reigns as well yeah so i think they i think they got i think tom phillips falls on that one too but for some reason they just say he's on assignment I'm not even sure what assignment is. That like I, it must be an American term because I've never heard that before. It's usually just a, a an excuse when you're gone, but they don't actually want to say. It. It's like when when Mauro Ranallo took his leave of ax, absence earlier this year, they started saying, "Yeah, he's on assignment," but of course he never showed back up until he came back in NXT. So it's usually a catch-all term for when you don't actually want to say what's going on. All right, that will. I'm glad to know that. So that's news to me. Uh, in other news, we've got seven different uh, topics written down for today. Um, so do you think we should get started to talking about like each of them? Yeah, go ahead. Throw the first one now, and, and we'll go from there. Okay, so I guess over the past few weeks, we've obviously heard the information about Nia Jax coming out. You've got, uh, you know some sites reporting that she is upset with her pay um her position and and the fact that she was scheduled to go uh lose clean to sasha banks at tlc obviously was replaced by alicia fox other sites reporting that uh it's it's to do with her body alexa bliss had an interview where she said uh like insinuated that it was her body and that she just needs a break because it's a hard life being on the road as a superstar which you know is true uh so I, I can't really imagine what the what the solution is right now. She's obviously been tweeting about WWE, so it doesn't seem like she's gone in any capacity. It doesn't even seem like she's mad. It just seems like there's something else, which could be just being uh, injured. And obviously, like today, we've got the news that The Rock may have had something to do with with uh, her taking the leave of absence, which was that uh, he reportedly told her if she's unhappy with where, what her character's doing, where she's going and her position in the company in general, then walk off. And if that's the truth, then we've got, like, a whole a whole new depth uh, to it because, obviously, like, The Rock has a huge say in the company and in Hollywood in general. If she were to leave the company, just because of her association with The Rock, Nia could do so many things. doesn't even have to be in the world of pro, uh, pro wrestling. You know, she's she's been expanding to modeling. She could do movies with The Rock, you know. I imagine the world is her oyster if she, if she were to do that. What do you think? You know, as far as the news that, oh, sorry, got a bit of an echo there. There we go. Should we get it now? Uh, so as far as her in 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 the sense of leaving, it seems that with this news now that it might have been The Rock's re- recommendation and it might have been because of her being scheduled to lose to Sasha Banks and TLC. I guess in a sense, I get it because they go back and forth with a lot of things, especially lately. Like, for example, it, it, it literally comes one week after Neville leaves and we're starting to see why, basically, with the Cruiserweights, the way they're being treated. Like, you, you, you saw the Cruiserweights on Raw this week doing the Enzo dance. And that just kind of accentuates why it never left in the first place. It's kind of the back and forth going on with Raw these days or WWE in general. Like, it's going to start to anger people. I could see it angering people. And if you're somebody like Nia Jax who has that background with The Rock, 
uh, yeah, she's probably going to speak out, and she did, and The Rock told her, yeah, if you want to put your foot down, go ahead, and that's exactly what she did. Yeah, exactly. I'm not still sold on the fact that it was that. Obviously, we've got the conflicting reports, and the fact that, that, that Alexa said what she did, and, and that uh, Naya herself on her Twitter account has been referencing the European tour and stuff, and, and we know that she is going to be there for that, uh, back for that in time. I, I feel like if anything, she was maybe a bit upset about the, the fact that she had to lose clean to Sasha, and that was all. But it, obviously, if, if she's coming back, um, and she's, you know, talking about WWE, I don't think there's too many hard feelings. You know, if I, if I was in her position, and I asked for a leave of absence, and I was, you know, quite frankly pissed off at the company, I would be promoting them, or promoting my appearances for them, promoting, like, appearances of other characters like she was doing. So I think that, that, if anything, it's probably just, maybe not an injury, but maybe, you know, her body is just worn down and she just needs a few weeks off. Yeah, I guess that could be the, the thing, too. But at the same time, like, she was replaced, basically, if, if it is true that she was supposed to feud with Sasha, she was replaced by Alicia Fox on Raw. And the second I saw those two interact, and they were having their backstage role, like, the first thing that went to, through my mind was, this again didn't we do this already and you know i i could actually see naya getting frustrated because it is something that she's been doing with sasha since last year actually and you know you're you're basically caught in a rut here it, if it were me yeah i would be mad just say hey can we come up with something different i'm gonna take a, a little bit of time off and cool myself off and in the meantime let's come up with something different so i couldn't i could see it that way or we could see it your way, which is basically her taking time off for injuries and stuff like that. Because I mean, there's, there's, you know, if we're talking about like her, her booking and stuff, if she was to be in, uh, you know, the, the position that Alicia Fox is in right now, if you think about it, she lost on the pre-show to to Sasha, but then she's now the captain of the women's team for Raw. And if this was Nia's position, I don't see how being in the captain of like a huge match uh like team raw versus team smackdown is is going to be is, you know something that she'd, she'd feel bad about that's that's something really cool yeah so well they, she, she probably didn't know about it and it, it it actually wouldn't surprise me it wouldn't surprise me if the only reason alicia fox got that spot is just out of some silly silly spiteful thing on part of wwe because they're known to do that I guess, you know, it's anybody's guess until she either gives information herself or she just returns and see how, you know, it feels like when she comes back. If she if it feels like she's mad or, you know, just revitalized in general. Uh, but I feel like we should move on to the second point now. Uh, so we have the, the siege that happened on Raw this week with SmackDown. Uh, and you obviously had on, on SmackDown the whole security heightened... Um, and, and I've seen that ratings were very high this week for SmackDown in comparison to previous weeks, you know, with the, the last big rating being when Vince McMahon was scheduled to be on, on SmackDown. Um, and, and I, I absolutely love that. It, when I seen that on Raw, I, 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 I was like really mad at SmackDown, which is, is what they wanted is for, you know, people to go, Oh wow. Look at what SmackDown did. They just made this huge statement by beating up everybody. If they could. What did you think of the whole, the whole siege and, you know, where this goes for the company in general? Well, truth be told, I've never really been a fan of the Raw vs. SmackDown thing. I'm not even a fan of the brand extension. But, like you said, like, there was a writing spite for, bo for both shows, actually, if I remember correctly. So, I really can't say that it isn't working. And truth be told, it is one of the better ways they started this feud than previous years, like when they had the bragging rights pay-per-views. And, well, I'm not really a fan of it. I mean, we had in a segment, a part of the, the big siege or beatdown or whatever you want to call it, we had basically Shinsuke Nakamura cheering on Baron Corbin as he's beating up a PA. That, to me, sounds silly. But as far as the whole segment is concerned, like, it was a pretty decent segment that really lit up the fire of this Raw vs. SmackDown feud thing. And it sparked interest. Like, I was definitely interested in SmackDown. But when there was nothing on SmackDown, I was disappointed. Now, they did get big ratings, which, you know, is great, obviously. But 
if you're sitting there for two hours and you get nothing, like, I don't know, to me, that doesn't really fit well. Yeah, no, no, I can see how that, there wasn't much on SmackDown. We basically had Randy Orton qualifying to be uh, on the team for SmackDown. And you had, uh, who, who, who even won the, the women's match? Uh, Becky Lynch. Becky Lynch, yeah. yeah. Um, I personally, I disagree with, with the whole, like, I'm against uh, the brand split thing. I think, you know, to an extent it doesn't work, but even for years before the you know it happened when it was taken away i was like okay yeah i can deal with this for a little bit then it, it didn't come back and and all we got was everything happens on raw and then only on smackdown you probably get a few good matches but nothing that really to me increased the storyline like i could miss every smackdown just watch raw and i'm perfectly fine going into the pay-per-view and now i have a reason as a fan to tune into SmackDown because it's completely different from what happens on Raw, which is, you know, and sometimes I feel like the visions should be better, um, better, you know, set in place, like not promoting the other the other show on, on this product. Like, I've seen, like, people promote Raw and SmackDown and vice versa, which I don't think they should do to an extent um, when they're supposed to be, especially when they're supposed to be competing against one another. But I, and that also encourages competition. And I love... Uh, you know what, what they're going to do and if there's any indication of what to expect in my eyes the, the match uh, last year that they had at survivor series team Raw versus team smackdown was amazing and it went basically an hour i think uh so if we get anything like that again i'm going to be very happy yeah the, the match was great last year um as far as far as the brand split goes i mean when they started this one just last year they did actually have, like, when they were doing the plugs for the pay-per-views, when Raw had a plug for, say, a SmackDown pay-per-view, it, they were actually going through the detail of not having the commentators do it. It was a voiceover actor doing it, and then you would cut to back to Raw. But over time, we've lost that, basically. Now they're just doing it whenever they want to plug the network. They have Michael Cole do it, so that's already lost. You already got the commentators jumping from shows. And, you know, it, this is just breaking down, like, far quicker than the first brand extension did. Like, we already got people jumping from shows without any expla- explanation, like we saw with Kane. So, uh, personally, I'm just not a fan. Now, as far as, like I said... So, so yeah, I, I agree with that. I, I feel like they should have a draft system, which I, I don't know some people are probably against. I personally loved it. Superstar Shake-Up was fine, but it didn't feel like it meant anything compared to a draft. Like, I, I loved when they had the whole... Okay, you're going to have one week where after like a big pay per view, major pay per view like WrestleMania, where or even SummerSlam they could do it after, where they have like Raw vs SmackDown on on the two shows, where it's like you know Kofi Kingston on on SmackDown versus you know who's somebody on Raw, you know Carl Anderson on Raw, winner of that match gets a draft pick for their for their um, roster and just have that little slot machine thing go and choose somebody. Um, which I, I really enjoyed that concept, and I would love to tune that into that every year, even if it was twice a year. But I, I feel like, to to some extent, twice a year for a draft is is uh, a bit much. I, I do feel like that, though that if anything, this is this has given people a reason to watch SmackDown. I think if any any reason they don't, it's because they're not a fan of having people like Jinder Mahal as champion. Which you know, I I don't personally mind him, but I know I've heard so many people say they're not watching SmackDown until he loses that title. Yeah, that's kind of a little extreme. I mean, he's not even the only bad part on SmackDown, if I'm honest. But uh, one of the things that does kind of bother me about this Survivor Series pay-per-view is the idea of having all the champions fight each other. Like, you got The Miz versus Baron Corbin, Natalya versus Alexa Bliss. Like, that right there is two heel versus heel matches. And that's it's kind of a little See, silly. I, I, I think as m- I love Natalya as champion, but I don't think she's going to be champion going into it. I think Charlotte's going to win that beforehand. And and replay and have Natalia replace Charlotte in the five on five, and it be you know Alexa versus Charlotte. And they promoted that on Raw Talk after um, after TLC. They said, you know, what's it going to be like competing against somebody like Charlotte Flair? You've competed obviously against Bailey, Sasha, and Becky, but you haven't competed against Charlotte. They really teased that, which makes me think that going into Survivor Series, it's going to end up being Charlotte Flair versus Alexa Bliss. Well, we'll see, because as far as that, like, I've always been under the assumption that since they're having the Starcade House show, 
basically they're gonna have a cage match and it, it really just sounds like they want to play off the original starcade where uh rick flair defeated uh harley race for the nwa title and i kind of feel they might do the switch there but of course we haven't heard anything about if Starcade's going to be live on the network or, or pre-taped or something like that, and I don't really see the big change coming if it's not going to be televised. Oh, I, I believe, I, even if it wasn't, I, I believe they will. I, I swear I've heard that it has. They even revealed a logo for it. Yeah. I don't know why they, where they'd go to that much detail if they don't intend on making it or promote it that much. You know, I've seen like 10, 10 to 15 videos on the YouTube channel of superstars promoting that pay- pay-per-view so I-, I imagine that's what it's going to be like and, and they've done a few of those where they've had like live events and turned them into into that so i imagine that's what they'll do this time hopefully i mean we haven't had one yet since the brand extension the last one i believe was in the madison madison square garden show uh i can't even remember when i think it was like early last year somewhere around there i know the main event was brock lesnar and big show yeah, that, that, that feels like a very long time ago. So, okay, I guess we should move on. So now we've we've had it teased for weeks, and now we've got confirmation it's going to be Jinder Mahal versus uh, Brock Lesnar at the pay-per-view. And there's also talk now of having a special guest referee, and Dave Meltzer has, has said it's very, very possible, though not 100%, you know, uh, complete yet, that Cena will be the special guest referee for the match. There's... They also mentioned uh, people like The Undertaker and Goldberg, but Meltzer said that obviously because um, both of those feuds with with Lesnar have been completed, he doesn't see why WWE would extend them. Whereas he feel like he feels like if somebody like Cena comes in, then Cena can be interesting as a dynamic between both Mahal because of their interactions on SmackDown and Lesnar because of their past feuds. Which I could also see because uh, Cena's competed for both shows and now he considers him, himself a quote unquote free agent. So, you know, it makes sense to have somebody that's a free agent if they're going to have anybody be the special guest referee. Yeah, that. So that what, are you, what are your feelings on that? As, as far as Cena goes, like, it, it, like, like you just said, like he is a free agent, so it would make sense to put him as the middleman in this match. As far as the match itself th- goes, though, like, I have zero interest in it. Like,. I, my personal taste is I have hated Jinder Mahal's title reign. Like, I know he's a nice guy, and he, he's a good, like, backstage worker and all that. But, you know, when you're WWE champion, you expect a certain level of work rate, mic skills, etc., and all that. And I just haven't gotten it from Mahal. Like, his feud with Nakamura, his promos were terrible. And not because of racist comments or anything. They were just bad delivery. And his reign has just been bad in general. So I really don't feel like he's really worth paying Brock Lesnar for this match. I, I just don't know what to say about it, really, because nothing about it is appealing to me. I, I personally, I, I don't really have a lot of appeal to the match just because I feel like they have no chemistry together. Like, it's it's so out of the blue. I could more see something like the, the other matches, any other match that's on the card, just not this match. And I actually like Jinder Mahal. His promos against Shinsuke, I hated, not because he's bad on the mic, because I think he's actually really good when he, when he, when he is in his zone. But, but the things he had to say, I think, and and obviously he was told to say them. I don't think he'd ad lib that whole that whole thing. Maybe the racist comments. Um, although I'd blame WWE if it was on WWE's part about them. But, but I feel like he didn't have any chemistry with Shinsuke. Plus, I don't like his finisher. I love the name of it, and I the Colossal, whatever it's called. I just don't like it. It feels like nobody can sell it good. Uh, then he also has the Singh Brothers. And and, and I, I know, I've heard a lot of people go go crazy about the fact that he has the Singh Brothers there to help him. But they, they that's what they did with Jericho and Owens. That's what they do with heel champions. When they have people by their side, they get, get involved. Yeah, that's well, at least the Singh um, Brothers have actually been the best part of this act as far as any redeeming qualities. Specifically, Sunil, who I think is it? Him? No, it's the other one. I don't know their names. I just know one of them is, stands out. I think. Yeah, they made me love them as the Bollywood boys, and then I hate them as the as the Sting brothers, which is what they want. Um, so they've already proven that they're worth something to the company. 
I think Jinder Mahal has been an experiment that they're kind of going back and forth on. They have the Indian tour. Like, did they have that already, or is that just about to happen? I can't even remember. No, it's coming up. It's coming up soon. Oh, okay. So I, I feel like after the Indian tour, he's dropping that title. I don't think he's going to hold it to WrestleMania or whatever he wants. I do feel like after he gets out of the title picture, he's going to be a, an upper mid carder for, you know, moving forward, uh, which, you know, I'm fine with. Well, it, it actually scares me because I've actually been commenting about it in other places. Like, Vince McMahon is known for being kind of stubborn and not wanting to admit a failure. And if by some chance the Indian tour doesn't do well, which I kind of smell it won't, we might just see Mahal just go straight into WrestleMania before they give up on him. Just so he could say, well, it did work, you just didn't see the results. So it might. It, yeah, I, I, I personally, I, I, I think if anything, the Indian Two is going to be great. Um, and my perspective on this is that okay, so you're you're from the United States, right? I am. Yeah. Asking. Yeah. Okay, so when people are over there, it's 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 quite common. I've found, and you may disagree with this, that you all take the wrestling for granted. Whenever we have wrestling elsewhere. It happens maybe once, twice a year maximum. I've never been to a show. And the reason is because closest show to me is six hours away. And I'm paying what you may pay $100 for a ticket. I would have to pay three, four, five, six times as much. I tried to get a ticket to WWE uh, last time it was in here. And this is for a live event that you know nothing's going to happen in. You know, the one point one, you know, 0.0001% chance that a title change happens. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and... You know, that's seven, eight, nine hundred dollars for for a good seat, and even the smaller seats are still two, three hundred dollars. And I'm I'm like, I don't want to pay that for a live event. I'd pay that for a pay per view, and even that's a stretch. Um, and the same, I've heard the same from people from the UK saying they get it once or twice a year. I've heard people, you know, elsewhere, and I've seen a huge, huge audience from India. Um, and on our wrestling rumors page, we have so many fans that are from India. Um. And they all talk about how much they love people like Roman Reigns, the Jinder Mahal. So if there's if there's a huge like amount of support in India for for him, I feel like the shows are going to do well. Plus the fact that they don't go to India often will will uh, you know certainly help the the, the fact that people go oh there's a, sh- a show coming we need to go to this because if we miss it now we're not going to get it for a year or two. Well, the thing at least specifically with India. There's there's an economic problem there. Like, uh, I believe the great Kali had a show there not that long, like maybe a year or two ago, and he had like maybe over seventy thousand people. Like that's WrestleMania level attendance. And uh, is this where he got hurt? Because I, I distinctly remember the one where he got like really really hurt. Yeah, I, I mean he only he only had one show in India, and the reason he hasn't done another one is because there just wasn't any money. And just think about that for a second. This is a show with WrestleMania level attendance, and it wasn't enough to make another show. That's kind of crazy when you think about it. Oh, that is that is crazy. Yeah, and uh, you know, it could have something to do with the currency. That's what I'd imagine it is, or what he was booked for, because Carly may not have realized his worth. You know, so, I've so heard ba- appearances go very very low uh, when they're not through a company like WWE or, you know, I guess maybe New Japan Pro Wrestling. I haven't, I haven't, you know, really followed that enough to know if they pay really good for their competitors to have match by match. Yeah, so at, at, at the end of the day, like, we'll see once the tour happens, but I, I just don't believe WWE is making exactly what they want out of this big Jinder Mahal experiment. Yeah, I, I mean, I guess, I guess it's subjective. It's really, like, what you what you think of Jinder Mahal. And, you know, to an extent, I kind of agree with you. But, again, I kind of think it's the people he has chemistry with. If he was competing against somebody like Sami Zayn, Sami Zayn was when I truly knew I was, I was like, I wouldn't say, like, I'm the biggest Jinder fan, but I like him. And when he competed at Fastlane this year against Sami Zayn, I was like, that, that match was really good. I believe he lost it, but it was still a great match. Like, I could see how talented he looked. And he hasn't done half of the moves he did back then now, which is one of the thing, things I think is going against him. Because he pretty much, when you look at him, you go, okay, he's just going to hit the Colossus somehow. 
and win. Um, and, and again, like Orton, he was kind of okay with. Then Shinsuke, he absolutely sucked with this feud. And then now nah, he, you know, he, he's going against Lesnar. Again, somebody that people don't, people don't even care about Lesnar a lot. So, you know, you got him with all these feuds that nobody, you know, can see that chemistry with. And obviously, I don't think he's going to do well. But I, I think we should move on because we've been on this topic for a little bit. Yeah, go ahead. Um, so reality shows is the next point. Um, so how how big are you uh, into into reality shows like you know Total Divas, Total Bellas, you know I guess like the the Tough Enough, and Diva Search. <laughs> Truth be told, <laughs> I don't watch any of them. <laughs> okay, so WWE are looking to expand their their footprint in in uh, you know reality TV, and they're also they've also in case you didn't know they've uh, they've just uh, worked with a few other partners to help sponsor an esports league called Cloud9. I just remembered that. Uh, so that's very interesting to see them expanding outside of, you know, wrestling. And and they're expanding, obviously, with the reality show. So there's two concepts that are being thought of right now. And I want you to tell me one by one if you think they'll be good. So the first is going to be called, uh, their work in progress title is the It Couple. So I, I guess you can already figure out where this is going. Yeah. It's going to be The Miz, Maurice, and it looks like the cast is also going to involve people like Dolph Ziggler, Avril Lavigne, and Ryan Cabrera. Uh, so, you know, it's it's a very possible, like, I'm very, myself, I'm a huge Miz and Maurice fan. I, I love Avril Lavigne and Ryan Cabrera, and Ziggler is obviously very underrated. He's an awesome dude. And I feel like, you know, combine that, and obviously they're going to have more people, not as the full-time cast, but as members that you see on the show that's that's very interesting to me plus they're obviously maurice is pregnant so if you get to see the journey there that's another whole element that i would love to see and the base the base the basis is basically that you have the these couple that are growing up in uh you know starting a family in hollywood and you've got their pursuits in wrestling thing uh and you know with Miz and and uh, maurice now even uh movies so you know, I guess the the whole thing that they wanna the, they wanna hone in on that series is that it's an alternative to Total Bellas and to the divas and the women, you know, that they have, um, and and provide something that's maybe more garnered to um, a male audience for a portion of it, because uh, that the the main focus I believe is on the Miz. So, uh, you know, what are, what are your thoughts on on something like that? Would that interest you any more than like a Total Bellas or a Total Divas? Personally, no, but it, it is a source of revenue and an opportunity for these guys. Like you already named The Miz and Dolph Ziggler. And, and you know, I think that's great because these are two guys who have been working for years. And, you know, they deserve some so, some sort of form to branch out. Like I personally am not the biggest Ziggler fan, but by all means, if he's going to get paid to be on a reality TV show and he could show, you know, a new side of him, by all means, go right ahead, man. Like, it's all you. So, yeah, I'm I'm all for this. I mean, I mean Total no Divas. Really. I, I think, yeah. I think, personally, if they're going to, even just for the first season, just to see the birth of the baby, I think even as a pilot season, that would be nice to see. And I would love to see that on the network eventually. Obviously, they're partnering with EDE Network to do this. Same people that obviously do Total Bellas, Total Divas. Uh, and the same thing for the next one I'm about to say. Um... But, you know, I feel like that would be a very, a very good thing to have to, to appeal for even the channel itself to a different demographic. Um, so then the second one. So let's combine these, right? You have Tough Enough, you have the Diva Search, and you have the NXT seasonal show where they had to complete challenges. Now imagine you have uh, a series of women. They're, they're brought in. They'll go weekly from place to place with the, the rest of the WWE roster. Each week they'll complete challenges to see who is tough enough. And the last one remaining gets a WWE contract. I'm not specifically sure what they're going to do with it, what the working title is. I just know that it's like a plethora of all those those shows put together, and that they're going to be you know touring with the regular superstars. And I imagine this is in NXT. I don't imagine that goes straight up to the main roster. And uh, although you know WWE may just do that like they did with Eva, um, 
and then obviously like have you know week by week elimination 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 and then finally you see who the winner is who gets the contract and i guess who goes down to nxt um and obviously i feel like this will be people that like want to to be there so people that have some professional um desire to get in there not just random people that just are in it for the contract well i'm kind of hoping something like that I'm kind of hoping they actually take it serious this time because they have had tough enough like maybe six times already, and every single time. Please, I hope that. <laughs> Person. I, 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 I don't find any of the concepts bad. I think the diva search finding a woman, uh, a, a woman to like to, to be there and be a big star. That obviously, you know, you garner that, that there is some attention for that person just by the fact that they win. Um, yeah, that person you have tough enough. A concept that it is really good, you know. You may not have, you may not have like broke into the industry the way other people have, or maybe you know I've seen independent wrestlers on there before. Maybe you haven't got that chance to showcase your talent uh, to the world. So what do you do? You go on Tough Enough, you go on Diva Search, and you show what you've got. And the NXT season- seasonal shows, to an extent, like I found them funny. They were people have said they're demeaning. Yeah, kind of. I mean, half of what WWE and professional wrestling make you do in general is demeaning. Look at Braun Strowman that got put through a garbage disposer or whatever it was called. The, like, uh, a plethora of that. If they act, if we actually see them wrestling, if it focuses more on the real-life aspect of, like, how hard it is to break into this industry and, and the, you know, the lengths they go to do that, then I would absolutely love to see that. Yeah, I'd be fine with it. I mean, usually the problem with these Tough Enough shows or Total Divas is usually who they cast. Like, sometimes you get these people who have absolutely no business being around. Like, I still remember that first episode of the last season of Tough Enough where, what was her name? Like, I forgot her name. Like, she was one of the Funkadactyls. Ugh. It was, let me see. That that wasn't last season. I believe that was, like, two, three seasons ago. Yeah, Cameron. Cameron. Uh, Was there, was there an... Actually, no, the USA Network season, like the last one they had with Stone Cold Steve Austin in 2011, I want to say. Well, basically, the first episode when she said her favorite match was like Alicia Fox and Melina or something like that. And Stone Cold just buried her. But Yeah, that's crazy. I mean, she's, she's also said, just as a side note, she, since then she said she's, back then she didn't know much about wrestling. She was just getting into it. And now her favorite was like uh, Steamboat versus Savage or something like that, which, I mean, is pretty practically everybody in the industry's favorite match um, yeah, the, I've heard. yeah that's 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 kind of my point like i if wwe is going to pick these people they should pick people that are going to be serious about it like i don't want to say something exactly negative about cameron like she did end up doing her job uh, and, and all that but you know like filtering people yeah. better because it, it it always sounds silly i don't know if you have heard make the show, i imagine if they make the show they should be doing that exact same thing from the start. Even if they bring those sort of people in, say, okay, you're not committed. Go back and try again another year when you've got more knowledge of the industry. Yeah, exactly. Um, there was a season after that because you've got people like Patrick Clark who's on NXT right now. Yeah. People like Sarah Lee who was just fired. You've got the, the people, uh, ZZ, and you have that, that Snow guy that I forget the name of, uh, the Big Yeti guy, and that was after that. That was like 2014, 2015, I believe. Yeah, so so for the two thousand for the two thousand eleven season, they actually looked over Austin Aries, and that to me is kind of crazy. Like for this season, like Patrick Clark, like he is an independent wrestler before he came to NXT, so that's great. He was great. I seen I seen he, he had this finisher. It was like a DDT where he like it, it's sort of like a real gruesome one where he like you know destroys them on the head and they like flip back over. And it, it like uh, it looked crazy, and I was like, I hope he uses this in WWE. But then he's got the elbow, and I don't know if it's just me, but the elbow, I feel like it just doesn't cut it for me. Same as the leg drop anymore. I don't like, I don't love them as finishers anymore like I used to. Um, but yeah, we're getting sidetracked. I, you know, point is, if they excel with it, I think we're both we would be both happy with that. If they if they make it the way we want it to make it, the the way that wrestling fans want it, not the way that, say, people outside the industry might want it. More reality drama-based rather than the whole, the journey, which is what we want, right? Yeah, or, or they start altering the votes, which they, they've been known to do a couple of times. Yeah, then, then yeah, I, I, I completely agree with that. So we've got three topics left. Uh, 
So let's talk about Adam Blompier. So how did you find out about this? I'll start with you. Uh, I found out about it literally as I got out of work. Like the first thing I see on my Facebook uh, uh, feed is the news about Adam Blompier, who apparently has come out and announced that he was, in fact, asking women to give him pictures, nude pictures, and basically using a status for it. Yeah, I'm so sick of hearing that. The past, like, month, we've heard so many people come out, and it's so completely disgusting to me to hear all these, like, in the industry that, you know, many people aspire to be in. You've got all all these dark secrets that are apparently, like, you know, quote unquote secret within the industry where it's like this person has done this this to like so many women or this person has taken advantage of this this dude or you know it's crazy and the fact that somebody that many people looked up to online and uh and and one girl that's actually come out i don't know if you've if you've seen that yourself yet yeah i read it yeah uh she even showed dms with uh with adam and showed that he, uh, that he, it was legitimately him. You've seen the tick, you've seen the name, you've seen the date, and it's completely real. She just took the screenshots too because it has his Cultaholics profile picture. Yeah. And it, it's disgusting to see, like, the, the fact that people think that they can use power to get that sort of thing is just crazy to me. Like, if that's what you, that's what you do, that's what you care about, you know, you're not, you don't have your priorities straight. You should be caring about your career, and look at him now. They've just they've, they've quit what culture I imagine because uh, why else would they all go at once? I doubt their contracts all expired on the one day. Um, no, they left. Yeah, that's that's what I expected. Uh, and then so they oh they've all done this. They went to to make uh, cultaholics. They've went from a channel that has. Uh, millions of subscribers to one that's just hit about around 130k he's come out with this which he should have never done in the first place but i'm glad he's came out with it not that his excuse means anything uh and and now what's going to happen to the channel he was creative director there at cult holics and if he's taking a a a leave of absence already from the company where do they go? What do they do? If the next video is supposed to go live tomorrow, like the first official video, what happens when he's not there to do anything? You know? And, and what happens if they lose all this this fan support and all these subscribers? What happens if they just completely fail just because of that one thing that, that Adam did? Well, uh, here's the thing. Like, I cover news specifically from Puerto Rico. And for anyone that knows Puerto Rico, they know a very, very dark incident took place there. The wrestling business is very, very dirty. WWE has been able to clean it up. A lot of independent promotions have been able to clean it up. But there's always that dark undertone underneath it. And, you know, to hear this coming out from from Adam Blompier, who's a pretty well popular guy. I, I mean, it got to a point where he could open a wrestling company from how popular he was. It's everybody didn't think he'd be able to do because they thought it was just an internet fad. Yeah, and but but you know, look at it now, and it's being rebranded as uh, Defiant Wrestling now because they've left. Yeah, and well, I am not defending him at all, but I am glad that he has openly admitted his mistake. Hopefully, he will actually seek help and try to fix his attitude. Now, as far as what's happening to, to Cultaholics. Those are his consequences for his actions. And whatever happens to them, like, it is all on him. If he could come back from that, great. But there will always be that underlying tone for him now. And it, it sucks because I, I I was a fan of his. I guess in a sense I still am because I do admire the work these guys have done. And in a sense I do see what's happened here as something childish because it has been pointed out. Like, the guy is young. He's younger than me. I'm 26. This guy's like maybe 22, 21. Are you talking about Blompier? Yeah. Well, uh, in, in one of the DMs with the girl, uh, the girl said she was 19 and he says you're you're like 10 years old, uh, 10 years younger than me. So he's 29, 30. 29, 30? Well, okay. I guess I was wrong. But, you know, it. it he, he didn't exactly come into the business as a promoter, per se. Like, he was just an internet guy. So it... it, it 
it it doesn't shock me that it went to his head the the popularity went to his head and well like he's going to pay the consequences for his actions if he can bounce back and he stays clean great but like i already said like he, that's always going to be under him now yeah so like i i, I agree with that I, like i i was a big fan of what culture although sometimes i felt like that they just purposely like talked shit about wwe in general just to make themselves feel better when they did the same things on what culture uh, uh, on what culture pro wrestling that they said wwe was like doing as bad storylines and whatever anyway that aside i was a fan um i i will say i feel like i distrust him a lot more which is natural after an incident like this his word means a lot less to me and I, I even went as far as like unfollowing on Twitter and I, I just couldn't, I couldn't even, you know, I have no respect for a person that does that sort of thing. Um, I, I am proud he, he actually came forward because a lot of people will try and fix it behind closed doors and act like nothing ever happened when in reality he should own up to what he did, which is what he did. And if he does get help, then that, that's good. But yeah, it's like a, a, you, you doing something like vandalizing a wall at school it'll be on your permanent record and that is on his permanent record that will follow him for the rest of his career he wants to go to wwe and work as a creative writer boom that's on his record as as having admitted to to sending um explicit photos and and receiving explicit photos from women using his fame as like as a, as a place to to have that all happen so you know, regardless of what you think of him, he's going to pay the consequences um, for the consequences the rest of his life, and that's something I feel like nobody understands when they start doing that. It'll follow you. It will get discovered at some point, um, and when it does, it'll follow you for the rest of your life, and and that's just what happens. Yeah, and and well, at this point, I mean, he is out of of WCPW or Defined Wrestling as they are now. And he is technically out of the pro wrestling business, but when it comes to wrestling itself, like, there is a lot of dark stuff when you look backstage and you hear news about certain people. Like, I, I could say stuff like myself, like information I've gotten, like, it's it's just a dark place. So I am glad that he's come clean about all this because a lot of people don't, and he's made yeah. it public. That way people actually know. No, I admire that because, like, you know, especially being on the internet and that being a place like you can escape from the internet if you're not prominent on the internet. But once you're built up around the internet, and we're seeing this, you know, not to to drain away from from wrestling at all, but obviously he's a YouTube guy, and in YouTube entertainers that have have reportedly done things like this, they've seen so much backlash at it, and and that's what's going to happen to him, you know, and. It, yeah, it's just sad to see. And obviously, you know, people people don't feel like they look behind the curtain enough because I totally agree with you about, you know, all this dark stuff that happens behind the scenes. Um, you know, I've, I've, I'm just reading now about uh, Ric Flair talking about Reed, his son, and suffering drug addictions. And he, you know, Rick didn't even realize that. And his son went for a WWE tryout. They're like, he excelled at his physical but he failed the drug test and Rick was like devastated at that. And that's just like, that's not even the dark, as dark as it gets. And that, that's just scratching the surface. Yeah. You know, it's just, I, in conclusion, it, it's, it's just something that he's going to, it's going to follow him for the rest of his life. And hopefully he can, he can use this as a way to heal himself, this exposure, even though it's bad exposure, heal himself, get back on track, focus on what he should be doing, which is his job, and focus on his family, his friends, and anybody he cares about. Yeah. And, you know, that that's that's all he can do. Mm -hmm. uh, and speaking about helping people, Jeff Jarrett's just gone into rehab today to transition to the next, the next point. Yeah. So, uh, do you want to discuss what, uh, what happened? Yeah, so apparently Jeff Jarrett was in Canada the last this past weekend, and he was scheduled for a couple of events. I forgot the the name of the company, but I'm not sure exactly on what the details were. But he wanted to cancel one of his shows because he was having visa issues at the border, and allegedly he had to come back. 
but he was found passed out backstage and it was, he, he's been a mess apparently and it's not the first time like i've heard that in in triple a for triple mania he was also a mess which was bad timing because we also had other incident incidents at that event and you know it's gone to the point okay. where anthem had to basically give him the can yeah, that's crazy like i don't even mind um impact but like they've changed that you know, titles have changed people. There's people coming and going without contracts. Like, it, it, nothing fits. Like, you even had um, Taryn Terrell, who they didn't sign to a contract. So she qualifies for this Bound for Glory match, and boom, she's gone before the match, which is crazy to me. They didn't even sign her to a, like, three-month deal or something. Uh, but, you know, Jeff, Jeff Jarrett himself, um, he's on a downward spiral, and he has been for quite a while. I, I sincerely, like, I didn't, I liked GFW. Obviously, I'm not American, so I can never go to the shows. Uh, you know, I do intentionally, you know, to come over there eventually. But until then, I, I won't be able to go to, to shows like that. And obviously, before he was with Impact, he was doing the, the shows around the the country. So I imagine that's probably what he's going to go and do again now that GFW is no longer with Impact. My problem is, like, what happens to the titles? What happens to his stars that came from him to Impact? Do they remain with Impact, especially if they have an Impact title? Or, you know, what happens, you know, in general with the whole company? And then you've got him in rehab now, you know. Well, actually, here, here's, a, here's the thing about the titles. Like, everything but the name Global Force belongs to Impact. Which is silly when you think about it. But so wait, basically, wasn't the deal not final though? Like I've only heard reports that the deal that they've made was never finalized. So well, what I would I would I, you know estimate is that everything that GFW owned going in is still theirs because they didn't finish the deal. Well, from what, from what I understand, like the library, well, the limited library they have, they literally showed three fourths of the whole library already. It's the library is theirs. The titles are theirs. The only thing that Jarrett technically owns right now, from what I understand, I'm not 100 percent sure, is just the name Global Force. Yeah, well, I guess you know he's got to start from scratch then. I guess basically, yeah, like all the towns they've already been signed to Impact. Well, the ones that that are still there anyway. I've already had some leave, but everything's been assimilated by Impact basically. And the only thing Jarrett has to his name is Global Force. Now, I do want to point out. About a year ago, there was this something. It was called Global Fuller's Gold, basically, and it was basically what is known as a gold scam. You okay. buy buy a piece of gold, you invest in it, and allegedly you get money back. But of course, that's not what Jared ended up doing. So what he's been. Yeah, so now, well, that all went away. Like he's done with that whole Global Force Gold thing. But basically, like it's. It's not the first time we've had suspicious activity from Jeff Jarrett. I guess you won't know truly what goes on with him and, and the company until he gets out of rehab and gets himself all better. Um, I've heard good stories about him. I've heard bad stories. Um, in fact, my girlfriend has met him and, and said he was an amazing person to her and to everybody she's ever interacted with um, or, or seen him interact with. Um, but then you get stories like this. And, and the fact, it's like what happens behind closed doors. Like, he acts a certain way uh, to the fans, but then behind closed doors, he's sitting there drunk or sitting there, um, you know, with uh, with problems with himself and, and his family and, and whatever else it is. Um, you know, I just hope he gets better. Hope he figures, yeah, figures what to do with the company and everything turns out well for him and, you know, you know, that's it. That's that. Yeah, it, it, the thing is, it, it, this kind of thing was pretty typical in the 90s and the 80s. But, of course, now with the social media age we live in, like, we find out right away. And, in a sense, it does help because, like, like we see now, like, Jarrett, right away, as soon as he lo lost his spot in Impact, like, he's in rehab. And it, that is a good, good thing. Like, I'm hoping he actually stays clean and cleans himself up and all that. 
And, well, that's the positive side of it. But at the same time, like him coming from the 80s, the 90s, the territory days, he is, in fact, prone to that kind of stuff. Yeah, I'm just, you know, it takes a certain amount of guts and, and personal, um, I guess, motivation, I get, you know, to, to want to improve yourself and to prove people wrong. Jeff has a lot of doubters right now. He has a lot of people against him. And he needs to prove them wrong. He needs to to fix himself, get back up, and start again. Yeah, and, and I think the the worst part of it is like he already had those doubters before he came into Impact, so he kind of had like a, a blessing in a sense by Impact Wrestling. They gave him the opportunity, they brought him in, and uh, unfortunately, well, he let him down. So now he's, he, like you said, he's got to clean himself up and start from scratch. You, know, you, can't, you can't blame Impact for this. It was a decision that they realistically should have made. They had somebody that was sitting there not doing their work because they were drunk all the time. They were, they tried to get Jarrett help. Jarrett didn't listen. And then they're like, okay, well, you're not, you're not working for us until you get yourself fixed. And then obviously now he's got, he's completely gone from the company and, you know, he's in rehab. So... You know, let's just hope that he fixes himself. You know, bottom line. Yeah. Uh, so now we've got the... You, you'll probably have to talk the most about this because I don't understand it a lot. But our final point for the day is the Power Struggle main event. Who was it? Who was in the main event? Oh, yeah. So in, in the upcoming Power Struggle event for New Japan, which is the... Oh, it hasn't happened yet. Yeah, it, it is the final event, I believe, for New Japan, aside from their annual uh, tag league and the main event is basically, uh, the main event is Kota Ibushi challenging Hiroshi Tanahashi for the Intercontinental Championship. Now, the thing that, that has me a little perplexed going into this, like, Tanahashi has been dealing with a torn biceps since before the G1 Climax. And since, since, since that tear, like, the, the question is, how long is he going to go before he takes time off? But the thing is, he, he doesn't seem to be taking any time off. So the big question is, is he going to keep the title all the way into Wrestle Kingdom, or is Kota Ibushi going to take yeah, the title? I just started thinking when you said that. I imagine, like, how long do you, do you imagine a torn bicep would take the heel? Yeah, like, he's been rehabbing it for months now, and, uh, of course, he's wrestling in a sling. He's very limited in the ring. He still has great matches, though, which is pretty surprising, but... Uh, like it, it is it is basically a question of when can he go no more and this is a guy who's had spinal issues he's had spinal surgery he's had all sorts of injuries at this point he's had an injury every single year and he just keeps going and the, it, it, it it's kind of crazy when you think about it because unlike john cena he doesn't even take time off for surgery yeah i think i think honestly like i obviously know both guys i'm just not too familiar with um, I don't follow it that you know week to week and what happens. So I, I would say, if, if I was to book it, obviously I'm not the booker, but I, if I was doing it myself, I would have Ibushi go over, have um, Tanahashi take some time off completely uh, to heal, and then hopefully be ready for Wrestle Kingdom for a rematch between the two. Yeah, but actually today the poster came out for Wrestle Kingdom and. You know, on one side of the poster, you have, of course, Tetsuya Naito and Kazuchika Okada, who are the main event of the show. In the other side of the poster, you have Hiroshi Tanahashi and Kenny Omega. Tanahashi is the current Intercontinental Champion, which is usually seen as the next big thing right after the World Champion there. If you have Kenny Omega next to him and you're judging this poster, it kind of points to the idea that but maybe... Isn't, isn't Kenny Omega the, uh, the United States champion over there? He is, he is. And it... So perhaps, perhaps it's indicating that it's, you know, main title and then champion, champion. I don't yeah. think that they love to do the matches uh, I've seen because, you know, even this year for wrestling, uh, for Wrestle Kingdom... They had so many championship matches. I don't think they're going to have a match with two titles in one unless they're competing twice. So I imagine it's probably... They've revealed it thinking, oh, okay, so obviously going into it, we're going to have Tanahashi and Okada and um, and Omega, whereas it's not implying... I, I can see how you're, you're thinking it, it's like that, but I don't think that that's what they'll do. 
Uh, and as for Tanahashi actually being champion going into it, it's a real risk. Because if he, if he doesn't take time off, do you think he'll be healed completely by Wrestle Kingdom? I don't think he will, but, you know, with the upcoming tag league, like, it's, it's just tag team matches, he may take it easy. But, you know, like I was saying, like, the injuries are piling up. Even if he does make it to Wrestle Kingdom intact, what about next year? What if he gets injured again? Like, it is becoming a question of how long can you go before you just break down completely? And yeah, not, yeah, like, not only that, the fact is, like, the longer he leaves it, the worse it gets, the worse the resulting injury you'll get. Like, if he doesn't get that fixed and it is serious, then it could potentially be career-threatening. And I've heard ever since the G1 Classic started that so many guys in the locker room are really hurting bad um, and competing with the, the schedule they have um, and the, the physicality that they have, it's not easy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, people, I, I always hear this, like, the whole, like, WWE sucks compared to New Japan Pro Wrestling. And the, the reason WWE Wrestling probably, like, the matches aren't, you know, sometimes they have really incredible matches in WWE, but, you know, for the most part, the matches are shorter, less physical. It's because the, the, the time they're on the road is a lot more. And sometimes I feel like New Japan Pro Wrestling has to do that a little more. Um, I know people love their hardcore wrestling, but if it's hurting the people that bad to the, to where they have a tournament and on the second or third night of it, they're, they're, they're destroyed. Their bodies are destroyed. It's like, you know, you may be working them a bit too hard. Well, at, at least with the G1, like, since it's always an annual thing, they always do have the, the plan in motion for Wrestle Kingdom. I, I, like, at least the counterpoint for the whole WWE thing, like, to me, WWE is more of a risk kind of, uh, of wrestling. Like, they take it easy, yeah, in the ring, but sometimes, like, you hear, like, guys will get hurt in, like, the simplest of things. Whereas in New Japan, they're hitting each other pr pretty hard often so they they do get banged up they do have more time off the wwe though so i'm not necessarily worried about most of them they can heal up it's just a matter of as they pile on because they don't take yeah, so, time off know, when they should the best solution here would be for tanahashi to would, would you say to, the best solution would be for him to retain or for abushi to win well i would uh, at least scheduling wise, I would say, oh man, that's that's kind of a tricky one because he could retain and just stay out of the tag league and just go straight to Wrestle Kingdom, that's, and he would have like, does time he off. The person he really tags with? Well, no. Usually they just get paired up randomly. Sometimes, well, not randomly, but sometimes they have their teams. Like he's teamed up with uh, Michael Elgin. Like I should probably look out, look after the, the lineup. I think the lineup is somewhere around there. Yeah, I, I, I imagine, like, if they could have somebody capable there, they could have him compete in the tag league and be perfectly fine. But if he if, if it's really bad, then they really need to think about, um, you know, cutting him off and, and letting him have that time to rest, whether it's as champion or whether it's, you know, as a, you know, no title, but he's got the, he's got the ability to go for the title again. Yeah, for now, it just seems like he's going to work it, and I guess it's fine, but, you know, it becomes a question of when will it be too much. Exactly. And, and you know, as we said, it's just like, you know, the little leaves it the worst it's going to get. If he doesn't if he doesn't have proper time to heal it, it's just going to com it's gonna aggravate the injury that is already pre-existing that isn't completely healed. And if, it, if the injury is bad to begin with, Obviously, it's going to compile and get worse and worse and worse to the point where it's, it could be career-threatening. And that's the problem here. Because from everything I've seen of Tanahashi, he's an amazing, amazing, talented performer. And if if he were to have his career ended, like the way Kushida did, almost, um, I don't even know if he's retiring, but I, I did hear that he almost, I think, died or something. But... Uh, but Wait, if, if, if he were to have his career ended because he wasn't allowed to have sufficient time off, that's a real problem. And that's what you risk just by the fact that, you know, you can't be 100% clear on what his, on what his heal rate will be. Like, he, he could have a return, like, 
uh, you know, you have to you have to do physical therapy on it for a certain amount of weeks. But then once you have one match and it triggers a uh, further injury, then that amount of you know amount of time he needs to to heal goes up exponentially. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So have you found any any uh, lineup? No, no, I couldn't find it. No. All right. Well, uh, I think that was our last uh, last uh, event to, to talk about for today. So we've obviously to recap. We had Nia Jax. Uh, you know, it seems like The Rock had some involvement. The Siege. We have diverse opinions on that. You you think uh, Siege is not ne- not necessarily good. Uh, it, it's it was the segment was good. I thought it was really good and made me hate SmackDown. It was weird, the whole, the Raw didn't invade, but I guess that might happen next week. Um, Mahal versus Lesnar, not that exciting. Reality shows, they, they seem promising, uh, may appeal to different demographics. Adam Blompier, hopefully he gets better, and, uh, and you know, this will be with him forever now. Jeff Jarrett, also hope he gets better. And then Power Struggle, hopefully Tem- Tenahashi is uh, able to, to be healed in time. So that's just a recap of everything we've talked about. Yeah, and before before we go, like we should probably plug in our plug our, our social media and stuff. Like any anything in specific you want to plug? Uh well, obviously, like wrestling room is first and foremost uh, the site. Um, you can find us on www.wrestlingrumors.net. Uh, aside from that, you know, at s h one nine nine five on Twitter, and that's it for me, man. For me, well. What could I plug? I actually don't have much uh, social media. I don't know if if you're into video games or or, or anything like I am on Twitch, like in Pacto Xlar. That's that's my Twitch. You find me there. I do also reports in Spanish, uh, wrestling reports in in com. And that would be it for me. So from us, thank you for tuning into our first episode. We are starting we are trying to work out our kinks. We are just starting after all. So thank you for listening, and we'll see you guys next time.